Hey, Mowgli, I got a fever. And the only prescription is man's red flower. I gotta have the red flower. So I got to check out the latest version of The Jungle Book, directed by Jon Favreau and starring so many talented people, including Ben Kingsley, Bill Murray, and of course, Christopher Walken. You're probably all familiar with the basic plot of this movie, but just in case you somehow haven't heard this story before, it is about an orphaned boy named Mowgli who is found alone in the jungle by a panther and raised by a family of wolves. It happens. And one day, the man-cub, as the animals call him, is discovered by the tiger Shere Khan, who hates man with the fire of a thousand suns and wants Mowgli to die. And since Mowgli does not want to die young, obviously, and the animals have no way of protecting him, the best thing for him to do is to leave the jungle and go to the man village. And so he begins his epic journey and meets many strange characters along the way, including a fun-loving bear, a seductive python, and a gigantopithecus. Because King Louis is no longer an orangutan, he is now a gigantopithecus. No, I'm not going to spell it. So as I'm sure many of you did, I grew up with the animated version of The Jungle Book that Disney made way back in, I think it was 1967, and I remember liking it very much as a kid. Uh, there was also a live-action remake that Disney did in 1994, which I've only seen bits of, so I can't really offer any personal commentary on that, but I've heard it was good. And with all that, when they announced this movie, I had to wonder, do we really need this? Is it necessary to have yet another Disney Jungle Book movie? Was anyone actually asking for this? Probably not, but you know what? Whether it's necessary or not, this turned out to be pretty damn good. Jean Favreau and company did a really good job with this one. Visually, it looks fantastic, especially in 3D. The environments are all so rich and detailed, and the animals are so lifelike, it's sometimes hard to tell what on screen is digital and what's actually there. And I know for a fact that in some of those scenes, the only thing on that screen that is actually real is Neil Sethi, who plays Mowgli. And even though I know this to be true, I still have a hard time believing it because it just looks so damn amazing. The story is basically the same as the one in the original animated movie, although they changed a few details here and there, and also incorporated a few elements from the books that were not in the original movie. The wolves have a much bigger role in this movie, as does the red flower, which is basically what the animals call fire. Uh, at the same time, the python Ka has a greatly reduced role. She basically shows up in one scene to act as the exposition fairy and a brief threat to Mowgli's life, and then is never seen again, which is kind of a shame. The acting is pretty solid, which is really what you would expect from this cast. I thought Neil Sethi did a pretty damn good job as Mowgli, especially considering, for one thing, his youth and inexperience, and also because his co-stars are all digital creations and he often has to act against blue screens and puppet stand-ins. Most adults would have trouble with this. I think he handled it pretty well. Bill Murray is, of course, hilarious as the carefree and mischievous Baloo, and there's a point in this movie where he and Neil Sethi actually get to sing a little bit of The Bare Necessities, and it turns out Bill has a pretty good singing voice. And Neil... He needs some work. <laughs> um, it, he's young, he may get better over time, but yeah, his singing was, not gonna lie, it was a bit off-key. I think Ben Kingsley was the perfect choice to voice Bagheera. He brings a great sense of wisdom and experience to the character. Lupita Nyong'o does an outstanding job as Mowgli's adopted wolf mother, Raksha. Very kind and compassionate, while at the same time also very strong and protective of her children. Idris Elba is very intimidating as the sinister Shere Khan, the tiger. And Scarlett Johansson as sexy voice Ka. Oh, I remember hearing her voice in the trailer, and I wasn't really sure how well that was gonna work out. But you know what? After seeing the movie, this was actually a really good choice. Her voice has this natural hypnotic quality to it, and watching Mowgli slowly become entranced while standing there in Ka's coils listening to her sweet, magical voice. 
I'm sitting there in the theater thinking, you know what? I have a hard time believing any man would not fall into a trance listening to that voice. I get it. She does not get to sing the song Trust in Me during the movie, but she does get to sing it during the credits, so they made some use of the song. And I should probably mention Gary Shandling, God rest his soul, has a very small role as Icky the Porcupine in this movie, and I suppose this will end up being his last movie, which is really too bad. We miss you, Gary. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention Christopher Walken as the voice of King Louis. Wow. What a performance. Yeah, Walken was very interesting. He's basically playing the character like a mob boss. How do you know so much about me, kid? I have ears. My ears have ears. I love that line. And if you're wondering if Christopher Walken gets a chance to sing I Wanna Be Like You from the original animated movie, not only does he sing the song, but they actually brought in Richard Sherman himself to write new lyrics for the song. And that is pretty awesome, even if the song does kind of come out of nowhere in the movie. The scene actually starts out pretty dark and intense as Mowgli is kidnapped by the monkeys and brought before this huge friggin' ape. And then all of a sudden, this rather upbeat music kicks up, and I'm thinking, this doesn't really match what we've seen so far. Wait. Are they actually going there? And sure enough, now don't try to kid me, man cub. I'll make a deal with you. Oh my god, they're going there. Yes! Oh, that's awesome. Even if it was kind of out of place in that scene, it still brought a smile to my face. I have to admit that. And honestly, if the idea of Christopher Walken singing I Wanna Be Like You does not make you happy, then I just don't get you. I don't. All in all, this is an excellent movie with some of the best visuals I have ever seen, and it definitely benefits a bit from nostalgia, but it's still strong enough to stand on its own. Well worth the price of admission and even the 3D surcharge for kids and adults alike, so go see this movie. And that's all I got to say about The Jungle Book, so till next time, take care.